welcome to the out of this world Trona Pinnacles. Today we're doing a little bit of our favorite style of camping. Wild camping. <laughs> and it's the perfect place to talk about solar. solar. This is our fourth solar install on three different RVs. And from our experience, the most difficult part about going off the cord has got to be the solar install and setup. Which is why it's important to know this isn't exactly a how-to video because each RV and each installation is going to be unique. We'll walk you through most of the steps of our solar install on our RV and hopefully it will make your solar install go a little more smoothly. Whether you plan to install this yourself or have a technician do it, it's important to understand and know all the steps of the process before you get started with the install. This is specifically about the install of our GoPower Solar All Electric Kit. We're not going to go into how it all works today, we'll save that for later videos. The kit comes with everything you see here, and it's designed for an all electric coach or for people like us who use a lot of power when you're out wild camping. We had our installation done at the Fleetwood Factory Service Center in Decatur, Indiana because, well, that's where we picked up our coach. And we tried to capture as much of the install as possible, so it's kind of a long, semi-technical video. So grab a notepad and let's dive in. The first and most important step is to read the manual. It's chock full of all kinds of good information and it's important because sadly not all RV installers are going to have experience with such a large solar kit. So make sure they read it too. Visually inspect everything to make sure there's no damage from shipping. Also check and make sure all the necessary parts were included in the box. Mounting hardware, check. Heavy gauge battery cables, heavy duty DC fuse block, solar breaker, check. Charge controller and monitor remote, check. We're using a cable entry plate for our install, but many new RVs now come with solar pre-wire and this exact connector, which if you have one, will save you a lot of time and money. In fact, if we would have had solar pre-wired on our RV, I probably would have installed the kit myself. And that's saying a lot if you've seen any of my installation videos, right? We've also added an optional tilting kit that will help us get more power while winter camping. Since the tilting arms don't come with the solar all electric kit, we begin with mounting the brackets to the panels and getting familiar with the way our tilting kit is going to work. Notice we're still on the ground. It's best to do as much on the ground level as possible before moving the panels onto the roof. Carefully inspect the roof for any damage or repairs that may need attention before the panels are installed. Take measurements of the available roof space and the panel sizes. Our installer made a simple drawing to plan where our panels would best fit on the roof without obstructions or possible shading from the AC units. This part is extremely important. They've even given you a nice blank space here in the instruction manual to draw it out. No art degree required. Before taking the panels up, use the boxes and place them on the roof where you think your panels will best fit. But keep in mind, the boxes are slightly larger than the panels, so this step is more of a double check than anything else. Trust me, double checking with lightweight cardboard boxes is a whole lot easier than bringing up the panels. Next we choose the locations of our charge controller and fuses. We want them to be as close to the battery bank as possible in order to keep our cables short. As a general rule, the thinner your wire and the longer your wire, the more chance you'll have for voltage loss, meaning you can actually lose power between your solar panels and your battery bank. A good install location for the charge controller is near the inverter because it's often close to the batteries and there will already be access points to run the cable to the batteries and into the coach. Now we search for the best place to install our cable entry plate. Again, we want the cable to be as short as possible to keep the power loss at a minimum. We choose to run the cables behind the fridge. It's a common spot for most RVs since there's easy access to the roof and a large hidden area to run the wires. Cautiously drill through the roof to where the cable entry plate will be mounted, but don't be too concerned about the hole because the cable entry plate is watertight and covers a large area. Our connector cables are run through the roof, behind the fridge, under and behind the cabinets, and out to the solar controller. The included cable is 10 gauge and should not extend more than 25 feet. Our final cable run was approximately 20 feet. 
Our installer used a waterproof tape around the wires to plug the hole, and around the footprint of the cable entry plate as an extra precaution. When the screws go through the tape, it helps seal the screw holes and keep water out. Sealant is used around the cable entry plate and on top of the screw heads to further protect from potential water leaks. The wires are secured behind the fridge after we're done with the cable entry plate install. The connector cable is cut and attached to the solar breaker. The breaker should be set in the off position until the install is 100% complete. The breaker goes in between the cable entry plate and the solar charge controller. Make sure it's accessible in case you need to flip the breaker and disconnect the solar power. Use the included template and choose an easily accessible install location inside your RV for the charge controller monitor panel. You'll need to access this monitor often while you're out wild camping. Use the included heavy duty four gauge battery cable and mount the DC fuse block between the charge controller and the battery. Again, keep your wires as short as possible. Now it's time to get started with the panels. Carefully bring up the solar panels and cover them with the boxes to protect the panels from tools, but most importantly, keep the panels from bringing in any power. With this many solar panels, you don't want to risk electrical shock. Even if you're indoors like we are, the panels will still produce electricity. After more measuring, double and triple checking, we start drilling the mounting holes for the panel install. Our installer used rivets, but we've since provided feedback to Fleetwood and GoPower and now they suggest using the included number 10 screws. Of course, you should always contact your RV manufacturer and ask about your specific RV roof before selecting any mounting hardware. The panels are mounted and our optional tilting arms are installed to test angles and provide easy access to the solar panel connectors. Notice the cardboard is still covering the solar panels to protect from potential electric shock. Once the panels are all attached, it's time to connect the panels in series, meaning panel one is connected to panel two, and panel two is connected to panel three, and so on. After connecting all the panels, the first panel and the last panel will have an extra wire hanging off. We connect the included extension cables and then plug into the cable entry plate. And that's it for the install. The final step is the fun one. Bring the RV out to an awesome wild camping spot like this one, flip on the breakers and see what she can do. In full afternoon sun, you should be able to bring in between 50 and 60 amps. Now that is some serious power. If you take anything away from this video, it should be this. Understand the installation process completely before taking it anywhere. You want to get the install right the first time. Trust me. We'll go over exactly how solar works, batteries, inverter, and charger settings in future videos, which you'll find here on our solar page. Yeah, so if you have any specific questions you'd like us to address, make sure and leave them in the comment box and we will comb through those before we make our next video. And remember, the installation and the setup of the solar has gotta be the most difficult and frustrating part. Once you're all tweaked in, you rarely have to change it. Yeah, so then all you have to worry about is where you're gonna go next. True. See you on the road. See you on the road. Oh, it's good. Okay, I can sound good. <laughs>